Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to uh, another episode of Looking at Stuff. And, you know, I think we're going to go it a little slower today. You know, I, I don't really have a bin to look at. I mean, I have a lot of bins. And you know that if you'd like to look at some stuff, um, this is the place to go to. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know, we're going to put down... I'm gonna put down the glasses and let's let's talk a little bit uh, first first things first this is an exciting day because not only oh hi how are you I'm your host Bill and this is looking at stuff um, welcome but anyway most times when you see this show we're uh, you know having a beer and perhaps some water. In fact, I need to get my water. Here it is. Nothing like a cool glass of water. You should get some now. Let's sit down, get ready. Just looking at stuff uh, really makes you thirsty. But fortunately, today we're on brawn time, which means normally it would mean a speed round, we need to look at a lot of things, but right now it just means that time is standing still. We can just look at whatever and take our time. And look what I have. Rogers Pilsner. This is not an advertisement for Rogers. And I'm sure Manny wouldn't endorse this channel. But all I want to say is that we happened to have um, a visitor the other day from Pagliacci Pizza. And they're not a sponsor either, but um, they carry Rogers. And every time we order a Pagliacci Pizza, uh, I request that they bring me a six pack of one of my favorite beers, local beer here uh, in uh, Rogersville. Let's crack it. Well, no uh, further ado, let's get looking at stuff. Um, hang on here. Uh, here. This is a funny thing, this is a lighter I use often. It's a, you know, regular old Zippo. You know, I don't know any of these bit tricks. Ooh, huh. Fla. Uh, but it's from the Hard Rock Cafe in San Diego, a place I went to when I was, uh, I think 19 or something. I don't know, maybe I was 20. With my girlfriend and her family. You know, went to Disneyland and all that kind of stuff. And Universal Studios. By the way, at the time, Man, if you were rocking a Hard Rock Cafe t-shirt or something from anywhere, it was cool. So to get something that had the name, now it's just like, ah, this is just a big corporate uh, situation. I mean, maybe it was back then, but yeah, maybe I'm just old. Money makes the world go round so much that you get a belt buckle. Look at that. What a stack of bands right there. Put that sucker on your belt. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm a cowboy. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm a cowboy. You know what I mean? Okay, Ben. Anyway, only in America. Freaking belt buckle. The stack. If it were only a stack. Huh. It'd be funny if it was. Oh, no, here we go. Not legal tender. I guess that means the right, there's nothing else to write in the rest of the stack of money. <clears throat> well, next up, before we really get looking at things and some of the stuff I've got kicking around, uh, we're going to have to put on our spectacles. So I think we'll put on these old spectacles right now. You know, they go around your ear. Let's put these on right now and we can get a, a closer look at things. Uh, these are, looks like these particular spectacles are from um, John Reynolds' company, Optricians, somewhere in New York. Anyway, interesting stuff you can find when you're looking for stuff and at stuff. This is an interesting little item. It's a toy. It's a toy tank. So you would give this to a child 
and say, here, war is inevitable. Why don't you get used to it and play with this toy that represents death? What are you, like four? Here, start playing with this toy. Look at those tracks, isn't that cool? Yeah! And you get older, you get a little more you know, into these things. Pretty soon, the next thing you know. I don't know. I, I'm just saying that toys with a military type um, theme are just not what I would probably reach for if I were bearing a child. But, you know, I guess who am I to say? Prepare your kids for the inevitable? Maybe it's a good idea, but the funny thing is, is when it comes to sex, you wouldn't really talk to your four-year-old about sex, but you would certainly give that four-year-old this cool... Look at this, it's got these treads. Look at that, it's so cool. It goes over sand and dirt. Kaboom! Die! Go on the other side of that, you have these other things, other little metal toys that have treads. Look at this. This is a case tractor, um, like a bulldozer, you know? You ever see that movie Killdozer? Look out! Well, anyway. It's like a little case tractor. You can push stuff around and clear off surfaces. Mm. Well, don't clear off my beer, Mr. Tractor. So, I mean, can you imagine like giving your four-year-old this toy with these treads on it? Like, That's pretty cool. Look at that. What do you do with that, Dad? And you say, you know, push dirt around. You know, and then you grow these plants and trees so everybody can eat. And they're like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool, Dad. How about this one? Uh, men get in that and kill other men. Cool, man, let's get it. Four years old. Look at this. Take a shot. It's in shape of a, a bullet. I mean, I suppose it, it, you might think it could be a tip of a bullet or something um, else. Something rattles inside of it. What is it? Look at that. The little shot glasses. Four shot glasses. All in, all contained in this little take a shot silver bullet or whatever it is. Anyway, um, drink up and uh... <laughs> I got stacks of cash. It's a nice little trophy. Nice little walnut base on this. Um, I tracked this down because I was looking for a new like, metal trophy piece uh, to use as a... Um, I'm making a lamp out of it. The old lamp had, <laughs> funnily enough, a guy with a gun. The tip of the gun broke off. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, maybe this one with the dog. But now that I see it on this walnut base, it has a little bit different type of screw on thing here. It also looks like it's made out of pewter. I can't tell if this is like a, a scout or it could be a hunting dog, it could be a bird dog, and this is a young guy. He has a, it looks like a cub scout, what do they call that, a bolo or, he's got this little hat. And he's petting his little dog and says, you better, better go get that bird, dog. And the dog says, sure, papa. Well, I, I like the trophy. It's a trophy that sort of says, you could put something in here that sort of says, you know, best dog owner or trainer or best bird man. Not really sure. You could put your lighter in there. It could be a lighter holder. Hard Rock Cafe. We mean dogs. Flick. Fire dog. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's a. Um, that guy doesn't really look like a fireman, does he? I guess that could be a Dalmatian. <laughs> All right, well. We could take another route. Here we go, into the pit stops. Give your little four year old 
this little race car. Look at this number 35. 3, 5. Firestone STP stuff. That's fine. I mean, it's some branding, but it's not like you're really promoting, you know, fossil fuels so much. It's just, we're just racing here. Those are okay. Uh, what's this other one on here? I don't know. 20, oh, Quaker State. Anyway, so then you got this shell. Look at that. This guy runs in the pit stop. And then, uh, you know, you load them up. Oops. Fill her up. Alright, we're done. Look at that. How much do we get? I don't know. What? I mean, that's... Like that. That's okay. Let's talk about. Uh, got a couple cameras to show you. We'll make this kind of quick. These are old Kodak, um, what they used to call Kodak pocket cameras. I don't know. It was from the 30s or 40s or something like that. They're pretty old. They've got this cool leather cover, um, and this, this is a little secret button right here. So these are just these are fold-out cameras. Oh, by the way, this is. If you're going to put this camera on a tripod right here. Also, this little Kodak emblem unfolds. We'll get to that in a minute. So we pop it open, click it open, and then as you can see, it's got all the workings right here of a camera. And we can pull this out and extend the bellows. It clicks into place, and there you go. Uh, this little Kodak thing flips out, and then instead of a tripod, you can just sort of rest it like that. Here you've got a. Um, ooh, you see that old canvas? Let's see if we can get some more light on that thing. No, I don't know. Maybe. Well, here you've got a little viewfinder. You can look down. But also, it collapses when you close the camera. It's kind of clever. Here is the. Uh, the distance measurement, so depending on how close you are to your subject. On the little lens down here you've got a aperture control. See that little aperture opening and closing. And then a little shutter. It's on time on a, like time delay, but you can set it to that regular uh, regular click, whatever they call that. Well, that's how they used to take them, and uh, the film is quite large for this. So this is why the uh, lens had had to expand. So the the lens gathers light uh, to a point, and then it then it, it basically transforms it this way. So as you kind of see in the V of the light, like it's gathering all this information in and then just opening it up enough to uh, put it on the film in here. In the back, you can see if the film were in there, it would cover this field here. You could have these wonderful big uh, negatives and then you could blow them up. It would be really high resolution actually. Depending on the film. Anyway, a little Kodak pocket camera. That wasn't very exciting really little sort of red uh, little glass piece in the back. So you can tell if you had film in there and apparently even though the light could go through here it wouldn't affect the film. I don't know. I'm not sure if those things get crappy with age but it's got these, all these little buttons that push in and out. Well, they push out anyway. But anyhow. show you another camera. This is called a Petrie Rangefinder. Rangefinder is a... All it really means is if you're looking through a viewfinder and there's a mirror system within here that is also uh, reflecting um, a little bit of light from this one bouncing off the mirror and then 
uh, sort of superimposing it over what you've got here. Uh, what that is is a, a little piece of uh, information that you can use to focus. So as you move this focus ring, something in here moves which changes uh, the size of that reflection or the focus of that reflection on the mirror that you're seeing in the viewfinder. Anyway, blah blah blah, trust me it works. Here you've got uh, how many pictures you've taken. You've got a little shutter button, film rewind. Interesting camera. Uh, this camera's from I don't know, 1960 or something like that. It's got a nice little lens on it that's permanent. So what they've done is they've offered these, which are auxiliary lenses. So what you would do is you would sneak up to your subject, get as close as you could to them, These are add-on little lenses that you can you can put on. You just screw it onto the end of the existing lens. Little threads that I think match. Now you can have now you can have this camera with this long, fancy, cool lens with this red line around it. Kind of makes it a little cooler, don't you think? Well, point is, is that it changes the focal length of 45 millimeters to focal length of whatever the hell this is. So wide angle, so this is, dude, I don't know, I'm lost interest in this whole situation. Okay, kids, that's it for now. Thanks for looking at stuff with me. I know this hasn't been the most exciting episode, but um, as I said, we're on brawn time, and brawn time could be fast or slow. Nobody knows. It's fluid, it's static, it's dynamic, it's monetary. I don't know what's wrong with that thing. I think it needs to be tossed. Um, let's see, do I have anything else for you? I might have something else for you. I have one more thing. Um, through a few of these. I've got a bunch of these. These are Franciscan goblets. Pretty heavy glass. This one's happened to be sort of an amber yellow. I think they'd be great for like root beer floats or super smoothies. Also have some of these, which I guess are more dessert dishes. I guess you could use these for a drink, but realistically, this is a nice ice cream dish. The other ones I might do a drink in, though. What else we got over here? One of the many pigs. Wink. But uh, this one's not a uh, piggy bank, actually. It's just a pig. You know, just a pig with a tail. Ceramic. This, I thought, you know, it's kind of like a pig, but it's nothing like a pig. This is just an elephant. Also not a piggy bank. Another Japanese uh, ceramic item. Trampoline!
Bye.